where the energy of the individual photon remains the same and when we change the source and this source is such that the individual photons emitted by it are having more energy so energy of the individual photon is changed only when the source is changed to a high energy source and now we will explain the next term in this equation which is actually the wave number the wave number is defined as 2 pi by lambda or 1 over lambda where 2 pi is actually considered as a unit angular distance which is 2 pi radian we can replace this one by 1 as well but for the angular calculation we will have to write this thing is 2 pi by lambda where lambda is the wavelength as we have already discussed now wavelength is the distance over which a wave repeats its shape so the wave starts from here for example and then its next starting point the same point is here so the wave will cover complete cycle and it will cover 2 pi radians or 360 degrees we can measure the wavelength from any position so this is the top position the next top position is here and from here to here one wavelength is completed or one cycle is completed now we know that energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength because energy is equal to h nu and nu is c by lambda so this is a constant and energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength the shorter the wavelength the high will be the energy the longer the wavelength the less will be the energy so in this electromagnetic spectrum in this direction we are going to the shorter wavelengths so from radio waves which are longer wavelengths we go through the infrared and visible ultraviolet x-rays and gamma rays and we see that the wavelength is becoming shorter shorter and shorter so wavelength is inversely proportional to the energy and now the important one is the wave number wave number is defined as the number of cycles in a unit distance and here we are having omega omega is the angular frequency which is equal to 2 pi nu where nu is the frequency this frequency we call the time frequency and this frequency which is called the wave number is called the spatial frequency we will discuss them one by one now as we know that in science we define physical quantities in terms of space or time so if i want to see the number of waves in a given distance then i will call it wave number and it will be one by m m here is one meter so it will be m and worse and if i want to see the number of waves in a unit time then it will be one over t and this will be per second which we call hertz as well so simply we say that wave number is the waves per distance while frequency which we call the time frequency are the waves per time traditionally we don't use this one meter distance as a unit uh, length we rather use one centimeter and this one centimeter is having its own importance which will come ahead and here the unit this the unit time is actually one second now in order to understand a wave number let's freeze the time and consider one centimeter length and if in this one centimeter we are having only one wave then we will say one wave per one centimeter and the wave number will become one centimeter inverse if we have two waves in this one centimeter then we will say that the frequency or the spatial frequency is two centimeter inverse and if we have three waves so the special frequency or the wave number will be three centimeter inverse similarly in time frequency we are 
having a certain point and then from this certain point in one second how many waves are passing now we will talk in terms of time so if one wave is passing in one second we will say the frequency is one hertz or one cycle per second if two waves are passing then we will say that the frequency is two hertz or two per second similarly for three waves three per second now the big question is why we need a wave number if wavelength is there which is inversely proportional and frequency is there which is directly proportional to the energy then why we need a wave number so we know that e equal to h nu equal hc by lambda from which we can write the hc is equal to nu lambda c being the speed of light omega equals 2 by nu and from the dispersion relation i can write that omega is equal to ck and from here i can write that k equals 2 pi by lambda in spectroscopy we plot absorption or transmission with respect to different variables for example we plot in uv vis the absorption with respect to wavelength and it is from lower wavelength to the higher wavelength similarly in pl spectroscopy we plot the emission intensity with respect to wavelength and in some cases when we want to calculate the band gap from the uv vis spectroscopy then we calculate this axis is an energy and we draw a slope on it and we calculate the energy of the material the band cape of the material so we can plot on this axis either wavelength or energy and in FTIR we actually plot wave number then why in IR spectra we need the wave number this is a very important question look here that in order to understand this thing we take the equation of a harmonic oscillator because we are understanding the oscillations of atom we are uh, want to understand in ir spectra the atomic excitations inside a molecule so inside a molecule atoms are attached to each other uh, like two masses attached to a spring so we use the harmonic oscillator equation f equal minus kx where k is the spring constant now we can write f equal ma md square x by dt square minus kx and from this we can derive that the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi k over m now i can change this equation by dividing this nu by c then this nu by c from this equation that nu by c will be equal to 1 over lambda so 1 over lambda i define as k and this is equal to 1 over 2 pi c k over m now here i will have to change uh, these two values because i want to simplify the calculations so the spring constant is a constant value I multiply it with the Avogadro number in order to convert the masses into atomic mass unit and the mass is two atoms means I will be discussing the bonds between two atoms so the mass will be replaced by the reduced mass which is equal to m1 plus m2 by m1 m2 now here k which is having a constant value around 5000 per centimeter our get row number and 1 over 2 pi c they are all constant if i put their constant values then this is equal to 2911 and then 1 over mu so mu i will calculate for example if i will be calculating for carbon carbon bond then i will write the carbon mass carbon mass and then multiply those masses so i will have to multiply with this one in order to get the wave number so a specific wave number can be obtained this way in FTIR spectrum 
we normally plot from high wave number to lower wave number which is traditional here in this plot we are having the increasing wave number in this direction and the decreasing wave number in this direction now why we will have to plot in wave number the FTIR spectrum this is a typical IR spectrum of a compound and here we can see that different peaks are visible there which are the indications of different bonds here in this compound and if I plot the same spectrum instead of wave number with energy or instead of wave number with wavelength then I will see like this now here we can observe that the peaks which are very broad here have been collapsed here in this region we can see that these two peaks are very wide from each other and they are much spaced from each other while here they have been collapsed here when we plotted wavelength in centimeter similarly these two peaks are completely not visible here but they are very readable here this shows that by plotting the ir spectra in wave number actually resolves the closely spaced peaks and this is the benefit of doing this thing now we can understand this thing numerically here that in this table if i focus on the cc double bond and the co double bond then if i calculate this thing this bond strength and wave number then i am having 1660 uh, for convert carbon and 1720 for carbon oxygen so the space between the two is around 60 wave number 60 per centimeter if the same is plotted in meter then it is means the wavelength and the wavelength in meter then it will be 6.02 and 5.81 so this is approximately 1.2 space and if i plot this in centimeter then this will become 600 and this will become 581 so in centimeter they are also closed by around 21 points here now in micrometer they are just 1.2 spaces and if i go and plot them in electron volt in milli electron volt they will be spaced by just seven steps so it is very evident from here that if we will have two peaks corresponding to cc and co they will be almost collapsed in energy or in wavelength while they will be much resolved or the space between them will increase if we plot them in wave number so that's why in ir spectra it is preferred to plot the ir spectra with respect to wave number the last thing that here we discuss is the phase shift when the starting point of two waves is different that leg we define is phase shift for example this is a wave which is having a certain phase phi and if a wave is phi by 2 radian phase shift with it then it will be like this these are the typical sine and cos waves and they are having a shift of pi by 2 radian means their starting point for example this wave starts from here and this wave starts from here so they are having phi by 2 difference in their starting and similarly if two waves are pi radian uh, phase shifted then the starting point of this wave the um, blue wave is actually here while the starting point of the green wave is this one so this shows a difference in phase of the wave by pi radians are 180 degrees 
Now what will happen when two or more waves are having different phases and this will cause the interference of waves. Here we can observe that when crest comes over the crest then the wave is enhanced or the trough comes over the trough then the wave is enhanced in the downward direction. But when the crest and trough comes over each other then we get a straight line here. So the phase shift in waves is actually causing the interference of waves. Okay, in all these questions we have answered up to question 8 and now the last question which is is the k space a momentum space or k space is a reciprocal space so the answer to this is yes we talk in solid state physics in terms of a momentum space or k space or we talk in terms of reciprocal space or reciprocal lattice so this k is actually the same thing but in order to understand this thing the k space or the reciprocal space or the diffraction pattern we get uh, from a material with the help of x-ray then we will discuss that thing in the forthcoming video